TRT World. He's a senior editor in TRT World and he's been working there since 2016. Uh, he got his bachelor on uh, communications in Manhattan College. And after that, he has he got his master's degree in public affairs and journalism in American University in Washington, D.C. Uh, he is really good uh, uh, journalist, as you, may, as you may can see. And today he is going to talk about uh, the journalistic writing. Um, and uh, without any further ado, I'd like to leave the floor to him. Uh, after he's done with his speech, we will be open the floor for any points or points of information. Uh, so I'll be entertaining the uh, questions uh, that is directed by you to our uh, dear speaker. So Mr. Mirza, uh, I, I don't want to take too much time of our speakers and you, of course. I, I think you have a lot of things to say today. So the floor is yours. <clears throat> Um, thank you uh, for that introduction. Uh, salam to everybody here. And uh, thank you to the Islamic uh, Cooperation Youth Forum for having me. Um, as, uh, as Ennis mentioned, um, I've worked in uh, Pakistan as a journalist uh, reporting from there. I've worked in DC as well uh, for a number of different publications, both as a print and a television reporter. Um, so I have a pretty diverse um, Ex, uh, experience and I've been working here as an editor at TRT World um, for since 2016 and I have started the opinion section here and then now I run the opinion current affairs and uh, features uh, department uh, for online TRT World online not the television just in case anyone's uh, confused um, all right so because it's a very diverse group here, I see people from all over the world and uh, seems like uh, people of many diverse ages and probably experiences. It's uh, a bit harder for me. I hope that everything is relevant uh, to you and uh, this stuff you don't already know um, because I'm not sure if some of you are working journalists, if some of you are students, some of you are looking to get into journalism, whatever it is, I hope um, that it's useful. Anyways, uh, journalistic writing, is obviously an extremely diverse uh, topic. There's uh, many, many different types of uh, writing when it comes uh, to journalism. There's TV writing as well, which we won't get into um, because I think TV writing is kind of a seminar on its own. It's, uh, it's, it's an entirely different um, uh, discipline to uh, online and uh, print journalism. So I think what we should start with, I think is... Um, Let's start with basic news features. So now as a result of uh, kind of the digital age, um, we no longer have um, very strict kind of guidelines in terms of uh, print writing. Uh, once upon a time, you would have your news section, you'd have your opinion section, and uh, you'd have your Metro kind of section and you'd have a few features in there and then mostly would be news pieces. Uh, nowadays, uh, the lines have been blurred a lot. Opinion is still somewhat separated um, compared to features and news features and just straight news. Uh, straight news, the best example of straight news is the kind of stuff you find in wires. The wire agencies being AP, Reuters, AFP, uh, UPI, agencies like this. Um, look, basic news writing, I don't think we need to get into that. It's your very, it's your five kind of W's, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, this is the most objective um, kind of journalism. These wires are meant to feed all of the world's um, news organizations and then you can take those stories and build on them. And the best way, um, what TRT does a lot of is we don't have reporters in every part of the world. I have freelancers all over the world, but I don't have one in every single country. So if we get a, a wire, and this is for uh, some of you journalists who will probably be working in a lot of online spaces, at least in the beginning of your careers, is you take, um, let's say um, AP has a, has a piece on, um, uh, let's say an attack has taken place um, somewhere in Africa. And um, for instance, in Chad, recently there was an attack. And I remember AFP put it as a you know, uh, a jihadist attack has taken place, killing, I don't know, I think it was eight people or something. Um, so A, as, as Muslim journalists and people who are trying to break uh, the kind of hegemony of Western uh, media narratives and uh, the kind of languages that they use about the Muslim world, 
um, there's two things we look at when we look at that story. A, you look at this term jihadist. Um, there is nothing necessarily wrong with the term in practice. I guess jihadist is a weird kind of obfuscation of two different uh, languages, English and uh, English and Arabic. Um, but look at that term and question, why have they used that term? And are they doing the readers a service by telling, by saying they're jihadists, okay? Why don't we get into more detail? So when you're working in an online space, take that story, look at it and say, okay, how do we make this story into our own story? What is the interesting angle here? You pull out an angle from there. Okay, are, are these people, uh, are they kind of related to Boko Haram? Okay, uh, how are they related to Boko Haram? These are the kinds of things that you should always be looking at. The most important thing for any writer who, want, who wants to write is he should understand how to read first. Uh, it's most important to understand the copy that you're reading, the news, when you go and you open a newspaper, what exactly are you reading and what are they trying to say? Read between the lines. What are the words that they use and why do they use those words? Um, at TRT, we don't like to use the word Islamist or Islamist very much um, just because we feel it's a vague term. It doesn't really give the reader much of, a, much of an idea of the people who we're talking about. Maybe these people don't identify them as, themselves as Islamists. It's always best to identify people as they identify themselves. Of course, if there are laws in the country and there are terrorists who you must call terrorists, then you have to do that. Anyway, so news, please be careful. When writing news, you have to give the who, what, where, when, why, and how, but be careful about the words that you choose when you're describing people. And especially as Muslim journalists, um, we have to be careful not to fall into the same traps um, that Western um, media organizations fall into when they talk about the Muslim world. Uh, we should be there to try and provide nuance um, and understanding of the people and the places uh, that we're dealing with. Anyways, that's a very basic thing about news writing. So news feature writing is uh, something which adds a bit more depth than what the wires may do. Uh, these are stories that are driven by interviews. So your average news story should always be driven by interviews. Um, basically, you should have an expert, you should have maybe a character who is directly uh, influenced uh, by the event at hand and use that character to tell a wider story. So if you have a news story, or let's use that Chad one again, uh, maybe you take a victim, you speak to him, you ask him what's happened, um, what have you experienced, have you experienced this before? Is this something you're seeing um, happening widely? And then you take his experiences and then you build a broader story on that. So you use that one person in Chad, maybe who's been affected to tell the wider story about Chad and maybe it's struggle um, with uh, militancy and maybe it's struggle with the government's heavy handed tactics uh, or civilian uh, collateral damage as some people put it. And again, a term that's not very good to use, but civilian casualties. So the idea behind every news story, I think ideally, is you should remember the person. Um, it is people who are always affected and who are the people you, that we speak about in the news and we should elevate them to be the center of the news. It's all about human interest. Um, not every story, remember everything I'm seeing here has caveats and exceptions to it. Not every story is going to be rich in the human element, nor does it have to be, but most stories can be told better if you find that one human element in the story and tell the story through that human being. Your stories will be richer. Chances are, if you are trying to get noticed as a journalist, um, if you use that as a kind of approach to storytelling, um, people are going to notice your stories and they'll understand that you really have a way of relating because people who read these stories, they are going to relate to them. They say, oh, I'm just like this guy. You know, I suffer from the same issues. I haven't had electricity for 12 hours in the last, um, you know, in the last two days. I feel the same things as this guy feels. And so it's a way that you can also relate and connect with your audience and make the material that you're trying to present um, relatable. So remember for news features and features as well, it's very important to have a character that your audience can connect with. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, basic for news features. Now news features don't have to be very in depth. When it comes to characters, as I'm mentioning, they're the most important part of feature writing. 
Um, now, feature writing is all about storytelling. Um, this is the stuff that you see in magazines. This is the stuff that you see in newspapers, sometimes on the metro section. Um, the longer uh, form stuff is all basically can be characterized under features. Um, these things feature characters. Uh, they feature a narrative. Um, they feature a character arc. They go beyond the facts and um, into the world of the story. They detail the people or the ideas behind it. Um, these take time to report and to write. Um, and your human interest is almost always at the heart of the story. Uh, it should be entertaining and it should be compelling. The theme should be clear and you should touch upon themes that are relevant to your readership. I'll get into this a little later if we have time. Um, but this comes to, I don't know how many of you are starting journalists, but if you're starting journalists, the most important thing is to learn how to pitch a story to an organization. Anyways, let the characters tell the story. Um, a lot of journalists try and insert themselves into the story too much, or they try and tell the story themselves, when it's uh, usually a better idea to let your interviews do the talking for you. Um, the people who are affected by the story are the best to tell the story. You as a reporter, you are essentially a vessel. Um, you are a conduit for these people's stories to get out into the public. Um, don't think that you are, um, you know, doing anyone a favor or you're the kind of the guardian of these stories. Yes, you, you have a responsibility um, to make sure that these people are represented well, that the story is told fairly, um, that you have found as many sides to the story as possible. But let the characters tell the story. Um, don't try and insert um, yourself or your own thoughts into the story too much unless it, it will help the reader get a better idea. Um, so this is kind of, uh, remember, we don't have much time here. I could give on each of these types of stories, I could give a seminar on each itself. So because we are very pressed for time, I'm going to give you a very, very basic kind of understanding of these. I'll give you a basic new, uh, structure of a story. Um, it's what we call an inverted pyramid. Um, so you have a pyramid and you turn that pyramid upside down. Um, so the widest part of the pyramid are your main facts. Then you tell your main facts at the top, which is the who, what, where, when, why. Then you get into a little bit more detail. Um, then you want to have a quote, let's say, from one of the characters in your story. Give a little more detail, a quote, maybe some comments. And then maybe you want to basically end over there. So essentially what you're doing is you're working with an inverted uh, pyramid. I don't uh, have the presentation here, but you guys can see the idea. The basic idea is the main facts, um, you know, um, more detail quotes, a bit of more detail quotes, and a kind of additional comment. This is your basic, basic news structure um, to adhere to. Um, this is something to keep in mind. Again, these are not rules. There are no rules in journalism. So you can always start with a quote if it's a very powerful quote. Um, and, you're, and you can also bury the lead sometimes in a story. Um, so there's many different ways to approach it, but this is your most basic way to approach any news story and any news feature. Features, you can be creative with. You can start with a quote. You can start with whatever you want, essentially. Okay, so that's a basic kind of um, covering of news features and features. Um, investigative stories. Um, investigative stories, they, they take time and research and uh, usually it's not for starting journalists unless you, you're, you're starting as a journalist and you already have very good sources. One of the main things to be able to tell investigative stories is to be able to develop sources. It requires an immense amount of, read, uh, an immense amount of reading and uh, research and you have to know your subject almost like an expert. Um, if you're going to try and investigate, for instance, um, spyware that uh, maybe the Israelis or the British are selling to the UAE and other Gulf countries, uh, you should know that spyware uh, inside out. You should know how it works, who sells it, um, what defense industry uh, looks like, what the firms are that deal with this. Um, you should be very clear on your reading and your research. Secondary material should be read first, books, papers, articles about the subject, and only then shall you go and try and find the primary documents, internal audits, investigations, receipts, memos, official communications, documents, tapes, things like that. 
Um, after you've done all of that research, then you start your interviews and you work from the outside in, uh, from the edges towards the main subject of the investigation. So if you're investigating, let's say, a minister, you will work your way out from maybe friends of his that know him, maybe childhood friends, acquaintances, people who have worked with him in the past, slowly work your way in um, to people who work with him, and then you go to the person itself. This is a basic way to try and make sure that by the time you get to your main interview and to your main subject, you have done all the homework surrounding him or her. Um, of course, investigatives uh, don't have to be kind of explosive stories. Um, not every investigation, investigative story is kind of going to be a world exclusive. Um, but there's many ways you can uh, do investigative stories about lobbying, which are very easy. Uh, for instance, if you want to find out about lobbyists in DC, uh, go look at um, all lobbyists have to register with the US government and all their activities are available online if anyone bothers to look. Um, so we've done these sorts of stories before. We just go through, see who is lobbying um, about Turkey. Um, and you can easily build an investigative story out of that. And then you find little threads. Um, okay, who is this person named in this? Okay, oh, interesting. This person has connections with um, this group, for instance. All right. So this is how you build stories, essentially, investigative stories. Uh, they take time and resources. Not every organization indulges them because they just don't have the time or the money to do so. Um, but if you have the time and money, obviously, uh, these are the stories that get picked up and often uh, can make a difference in legislation and things like that. All right. Um, I think that covers um, investigative stories. Um, I'll give you guys a few sh short examples of something you're probably um, now investigative stories, features, these things. These are the real kind of uh, the the really ideally the best thing that you can do in journalism what most people will end up doing in journalism when you first start your job especially if you're working in online are things like profiles explainers listicles photo essays um especially if you're working in the online thing so profiles they're pretty self-explanatory you take a, a, a kind of a just a, a subject uh, maybe there's a there's a new judge supreme court judge who's being elevated um, to the Supreme Court, and you do a profile of them, talk to their friends, family, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Or you can even mine this stuff curated from online. And you write a profile. You have explainers. Uh, Vox is probably the best at explainers. Um, this has become a very kind of um, trendy way to do journalism now is you take something like, let's say, um, COVID-19, you have now scientists saying that it's airborne. So most people would report, oh, scientists say that COVID-19 is airborne. And then you write the story about what people are saying, but Vox will take that and they'll say, okay, what does it mean to be airborne in the first place? And these are the kinds of questions that people actually ask on Google. So you do a real public service when you do explainers like these. So um, explainers are a big part of journalism now. If you can do these well, you'll always have a job in journalism. Uh, listicles. Um, this is, I don't mean necessarily the BuzzFeed type of stuff. Obviously, BuzzFeed does that sort of stuff. Um, they do it well for what they want. But um, news organizations, serious ones, also do listicles. Um, for instance, uh, after the Khashoggi incident in, in Istanbul, um, we did a listicle that did really well. Uh, you know, eight questions that Saudi Arabia still needs to answer about the Khashoggi killing. Um, so this is a way to turn news into a very easily digestible format um, for people to read and you can still ask very hard questions. Um, so understand that these are things that may seem like they're not serious news, but they are quite serious and they get people uh, listening, talking, debating, um, and they inform people, which is the basic, basic goal of journalism. Um, photo essays, of course, uh, self-explanatory. Um, I, we did a very good one on how Kashmiri women are suffering uh, under the lockdown uh, that was imposed after their special autonomous status, uh, the special status for Kashmir was revoked. Um, so it was uh, something that, okay, you have a lot of people writing about Kashmir. Uh, what is something that um, we can represent visually um, that hasn't necessarily been represented? And it was, okay, see how, how are women uh, uh, coping because it's a lot of these men who are arrested and things like that. It's the women that have to deal um, with the fallout of most of this. So they are the ones who usually are 
um, in both in war and conflict, etc., are the ones who are hardest hit. Uh, it's important to remember that and to highlight their stories. Um, so this was one example of one way we did it. Okay, let's take a visual and uh, go into their homes and see how they're dealing with what is happening. Um, so these are, again, some of the basic things. Um, maybe you guys want to do investigations and features. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you, a lot of you are going to end up doing these kinds of stories in the beginning. Um, that um, especially especially on uh, somebody just mentioned they would like to see the articles I can uh, what I can do is I can uh, send uh, people examples of these articles uh, maybe uh, after uh, the session is uh, coming to an end um, so you can take a look at these um, okay now okay let's move on now lastly um, opinion um, opinion writing is something I kind of have specialized in, uh, opinion editing rather, and I've written lots of opinions in the past as well, but um, it's uh, something a lot of people uh, really enjoy writing. Um, I would advise the younger journalists here at least. Um, if you're journalists, then report and be a journalist before you start uh, writing opinions, unless you have something very important to say, like a very personal connection to a story that will be unique for any editor who you are sending the story to. Um, if you're an academic, if you're a researcher, um, then yeah, by all means, write, um, write opinions. Um, if you have a very, very interesting um, perspective on something, a unique perspective, if you live in a place that the whole world is covering at this moment and you have a unique insight into it then by all means right but um i would say it's generally the purview of experts um or um you know people who who, who work who have specialty in a certain field um but so i'm not going to get too much into detail about opinion writing there's a few basic types of opinion writing you have column writing um, which are people who write weekly columns. They have a very distinct voice and tone, and people recognize them simply about their uh, by the way that they write, and they love what they write. That person can write about anything under the sun, and their readers are always going to go back and read them. Um, I always give the terrible example of Thomas Friedman, who I'm sure most of us do not uh, really like his writing, but every time he writes, people know what they're getting, and they go back to read it. Uh, there's Plenty, there are better examples like Nesreen Malik, who is the Sudanese writer who writes for The Guardian, um, who is fantastic, uh, writes about all sorts of things, but when everybody goes to read her, they know what they're writing. So those are columnists. And then you have analysis, um, which is more, uh, it's not as opinionated, but it tries to present the scenario and uh, gives kind of uh, different scenarios for what might happen realistically based on um, an insight and, a, and an expertise that the person has in the in that field. Uh, you have essays, um, you have satire as well, and then you have editorials. Editorials, um, editorials are yeah. I can share um, some of the opinion articles I've written. Um, editorials are basically we you don't see them in online publications a lot, but you see them in newspapers, and that is essentially the editorial board of the. Um, of the of the newspaper or the news organization that is uh, trying to give their take on a certain issue. So they're all written in-house. Um, these editorials are used to explain the way a paper has covered a sensitive uh, subject or the way a newspaper views a certain issue. Um, they want to explain or interpret or they want to criticize or persuade or praise. These are your four basic kind of, let's say, um, categories of editorials. Um, so they try and include opposing viewpoints and refute them. Uh, editorials understand fully the position of the organization and apply those positions to a multitude of different um, situations. One thing I want you guys to know is if you're writing opinions, don't be afraid of the weaknesses in your argument, um, address those weaknesses um, head on and argue against them. Um, if your piece has the things, the reasons why people may disagree with the point that you're putting across and you refute, the, you refute that, your point will be much stronger. It's always best not to try and ignore or hide um, any weaknesses or flaws 
in your article. Um, somebody asked the difference between a news article feature and opinion. Um, we can get to this, uh, the questions later. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, now one thing I want to tell you guys why I wanted to cut some of these short is uh, the most important thing you guys will be, should be learning is how to pitch articles. Um, I receive from outside compute contributors, maybe anywhere from up to, you know, 50 pitches a week. Um, most of them I stop reading within the first few sentences um, and, because I don't have time. So I need to know that immediately when I read the pitch, is this worth reading? If the person, if you cannot pitch your article succinctly and clearly in a few sentences, then I, as the editor, I'm not going to trust that this person really knows what they're writing about or knows or is going to be able to give me a story that I'm not going to have to work on for hours on end. And is it even worth working on when another writer can give me probably the same thing? And, I, and it requires a little work where we can take a piece from good and make it great instead of taking a piece from bad and making it decent, right? Um, so my guidelines for pitching are, um, okay. So know the biases, the preferences, the style, and the editorial outlook and themes of the publication that you pitch to. If you're pitching um, to TRT World, um, don't pitch to TRT World, let's say a story about um, how, you know, the coronavirus is affecting uh, businesses in a town in in new york you know like uh it's it's not it's not something that we are going to and you think it's funny but like you would be surprised at like the kinds of pitches we receive know the kind of things that trt looks at if you guys read trt or you read al jazeera we have a lot of parallels between the two organizations you kind of know the kinds of things we look at um you know the kinds of uh issues that we try and uh, address and how we approach these issues um, so understand that if you're, if you're pitching to the New York Times, know how to pitch to the New York Times. Understand the kinds of stories that they like. Of course, uh, like I said, there are exceptions to everything. If I find a pitch that's not something that we usually cover, but I find so fascinating, I'll probably take it. Um, but for your own um, kind of, um, let's say, progress as a journalist, really, really read um, your, your, the publication that you're pitching to see if they've covered the, uh, if you're pitching an opinion piece on Kosovo Serbia talks, just take a look through the opinion section, see that they've not published something already on it and don't waste your pitch on something that they've already done. Um, also one thing, just a small trick, um, pitch ahead of maybe events or anniversaries, like right to on tomorrow is July 15th, the Turkey, uh, the failed coup anniversary. A lot of the time editors sometimes don't have uh, time or don't remember that these anniversaries uh, and events are coming up. If you have a piece that's linked to one, maybe pitch it like the week before it's coming up and say, look, I have a piece, this anniversary is coming up. Um, you know, maybe you won't remember the uh, last, this month, 16, um, in July 16, the African countries gained their independence, I think 60 years ago. Um, so uh, this is something not many editors will remember. You say, look, 16 countries gained independence 60 years ago. I'd like to pitch a piece about uh, how those countries have fared since. Um, if, you, if you give your pitch as simple as that, the editor will be like, okay, I know what this piece is about. It's linked to something very specific. Interesting. Let me check out his past work or her past work. And maybe if it's good, let's go for it. Um, uh, if it's topical, kind of give maybe a short example in your pitch related to something that's going on with the news, if it's something that is linked to the news. Um, know how it might be relevant to the readership that uh, that organization has. Uh, give a very, very short introduction of yourself and a sample, one or two samples of your work. I get sometimes 15 samples, I don't know where to start and I won't start. Um, so send what you think are the two, three best stories that you've done. Um, maybe two even would be good enough. I, if I look at one story, I, I, I can kind of tell two stories, great. Um, so, and give a short introduction. Say, I, I'm a reporter, I work for this and this and this, I focus on this and this. I have a story about, and a good way to lay out a pitch is say, I have a story about um, how 
let's say, um, how disabled people have suffered uh, during COVID-19 in Istanbul as uh, the municipalities have not been able to um, perform the services that they were before, for example. This is not a real story, but I'm just giving you as an example. So you have very short, literally one sentence, and then you say A, give a bullet point A, I will talk to municipal workers, I will have one main uh, blind character, um, and B, I, uh, I have, I've seen like the numbers on this and this and this, and these are the kind of number of blind people or disabled people that are living in Istanbul and see if you want, you know, I'll end it with like, you know, a small story about this. So if you give like uh, one sentence and then a short outline, especially if it's a news feature, I'm not talking about opinion, for instance, but for a news feature or for features, um, it's, it's, you know, it, you just have a far better chance of uh, getting accepted or at least starting a conversation with the editor instead of uh, the editor not writing you back. Um, because a lot of editors won't write you back. A lot of you guys will get rejected. I've been rejected many times. Don't be discouraged. It's important to keep pitching. It's important to keep pitching to different places. Um, eventually you will get picked up if you, if you have something good to offer. Um, be succinct. I already mentioned that. I mean, be concise, be very to the point. Um, Good writing is clear thinking, right? If you know your subject uh, and you know exactly what it's about, you don't need to use so many words to explain it. Um, the best writers are the ones who write most simply. Don't try and don't feel the need to use big words. Um, read the New, New York Times. The New York Times, if you look at their average news story, it should be around a fifth grade reading level, fifth to seventh grade, let's say. Um, some of their more kind of really, really kind of advanced pieces that they do. Okay, maybe they go up or to a high school level. But remember, you want to write so that a fifth grader to an 11th grader can get, can understand, to get the same thing out of your story. It's not about who has the most fancy words to use or who has the most complex uh, theoretical ideas on something, you know, okay, I've, I've, I've studied, you know, uh, neo-colonialism and I'm a post-colonialist and, you know, like I have all of this to say, okay, great. But if you can, if you can illustrate that through what the people in your story have to say, your characters, and if you can say just very, if you can under, if you can explain that in a very simple manner, then you are actually doing a service. Um, uh, you know, everyone likes to read Franz Fanon. Um, he's not easy to read. Um, if you can explain Franz Fanon to people, to a fifth grader, then you're, then you're going to be a fantastic journalist, uh, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, these are kind of very basic uh, guidelines um, for pitching. Um, submitting, this is the other thing. So let's say your, your pitch has been submitted, uh, your pitch has been accepted. And, um, and I would advise to usually pitch the organization before you actually, a lot of people also just send articles and I've accepted articles that have been sent without a pitch that people are just saying, look, I've written this article on this and this. A lot of them generally are more experienced writers and I read it and I'm like, oh, this is a great piece. I'll, I'll take it as it is. Um, and of course we'll edit it and do whatever we do to it. Um, but I would advise to pitch first. Um, if you don't, if you submit in any case, this applies to just cold submissions and to submissions after you, pitched. Um, meet your deadline. First and foremost, deadlines are sacred. If you say I'm going to deliver on this day, you deliver on that day, preferably earlier. Um, don't agree to the deadline unless you can meet it. If you can't realistically meet it, tell them I can't meet that and try and negotiate a deadline. Obey word counts. This is really, really, really important. When I get a piece that is 1,200 words and I'm expecting 850 words, I do not want to even get into it. Um, some pieces I publish are 1200, I publish 1500 word pieces. Don't look at an organization, count their words and be like, well, you've published 1500 words before, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, that is not the point. The point is what they expect and what they want out of every story. Um, ask for the word limit, um, you know, ask the editor, what's the deadline? What, what are you, what is a deadline? What, uh, what, what is the word limit? Do you have any house style guides or house preferences that you guys would like me to follow or any submission guidelines that you have? Um, a lot of the time, sometimes they're on, they're already on the, uh, on the websites. Um, sometimes they aren't, uh, be open. Um, 
uh, ask them, you know, would you like me to submit in Microsoft Word? Would you like me to submit in a Google document? What, what do you work on? Uh, be open to criticism, judgment, and revision. Um, nobody is a perfect writer. Um, people write all their lives and they will be edited all their lives. Um, it's not because, uh, you know, the editor is a better writer. It's because when you have a different set of eyes on your work, you, 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 people see, you, every, everybody sees it from a different thing. I would recommend when you're writing, write something, step away from half an hour, an hour, even better if you have a day, step away from a day, go back and read it. You will immediately see things that you want to change, cut out, alter, maybe you want to see it from a different angle. Uh, I'm sure you guys have written stuff and you read it three years later and you're like, oh, I can't believe I wrote that. And you cringe at what you wrote or you're embarrassed by what you've written. Um, everybody goes through that. It's natural. Um, so even an hour or a day makes a difference. Um, this is um, the hard, the best quality a writer can have is to be able to edit and cut their own writing. It's the hardest thing to do. It's harder than writing itself is being able to cut and revise your own writing. Um, so if you get good at that, um, make sure to do that before you submit your first draft. You should already have edited it before you submit your first draft. Um, so yeah, be open to judgment, criticism, revision, go over the, the editor as well should be respectful and should not be trying to change your voice entirely. They shouldn't be trying to put words in your mouth. They should be trying to change it and still try and maintain the writer's voice. A good editor will do that. Um, give a headline and a deck. If I get a headline and a deck, by deck I mean a lot of the time you'll see uh, you know, a lot of uh, news organizations online. You, uh, this is not for print. You'll see the story. And maybe you'll see, you see like a one or two sentences um, kind of summarizing the story. So give the headline and the deck, it will make it a lot easier for the editor to know what it's about. And I know that you know your story. Um, submit in the form that they've asked Word, Google Doc, whatever. Respond, be available for revisions in a timely manner and address all of the comments and concerns. And feel free to dispute as well the editor's changes. Say, you know what? I don't feel like if you write it this way, I don't feel like we're really, or we're changing the point of this is not what that person meant or this is not really what I meant. So you're free to do that as long as you do it respectfully. Um, so this is, it's, it's very important uh, to know how to pitch, um, pitch this article, how to pitch a certain article and who you are, um, who you're kind of writing for. Uh, these are the most um, kind of basic things that you can, do to increase your chances of um, getting uh, getting published. Um, obviously, all of you should maybe try and maintain a blog, um, write regularly on your own, even if you don't publish it, uh, just to keep in practice. One exercise I did when I was uh, quite young, um, I would take some of my favorite writers and just write their piece again. Like I would just write their piece. And uh, what I learned from writing their words um it it helped me to understand how they how their flow of their writing works um how they break up sentences how they break up thoughts um it seems like a silly exercise but it's actually kind of fun and you kind of can almost get into the mind of some of your favorite writers and you can see how they structure stories and how they structure sentences and thoughts and things like that so th this is an exercise if you want you can always do um, uh, at home whenever you want. And it hopefully, hopefully you gain something out of it. Maybe you won't, I don't know, um, to each their own, you know? Um, so it's, it should be, um, it should be, uh, basically writing is, is, is a lifelong, uh, endeavor. Uh, you, you're never really a true master of it. Maybe some people are, but everyone you're improving as you go along. Um, I think I think we have covered the basics of kind of the different types of news stories and news writing. Um, I think it's better to have um, questions because um, I'm not sure again about what people's uh, kind of experiences are here. So let's uh, NS maybe open it up to the floor and you can ask questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mirza. Uh, it was really insightful. Um presentation that I can say. Even I have no uh, idea what's being journalist. 
I can say that from now on, I have at least a little bit information about uh, journalistic writing, at least. Um, so we have uh, some people that is want to ask a question. Uh, first of all, Mr. Abdikadir Mohamed from Somali. Uh, Mohamed Abdikadir, if you can hear us, you can proceed by asking your question to our speaker. <laughs> Mr. Abdikadir, we can't hear you at the moment. Can you speak louder? Yes. Still, we don't have the audio. I think your microphone is not working at the moment. Uh, we can uh, move on with our, our speaker then. We will, inshallah, once you uh, deal with your microphone, we will move on with you. Uh, Mr. Sa uh, Saad Chan Chantna from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, my name is Saad Channa and I'm from Pakistan. Uh, so basically, my question is, you talked about the flow of news article. So I want to ask that how to write a crispy and catchy lead of the article, of any news article when we write it? Uh, what are the basic components and uh, important components of lead? So the lead, will, the lead will always change. For instance, we did a story yesterday, which we messed up on. Um, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay. Um, so, for instance, um, so Sudan yesterday um, put in a whole raft of legislation, uh, kind of liberalizing um, reforms in the country, which outlawed FGM, which outlawed, um, which allowed uh, non-Muslims to kind of drink. Um, certain regulations about women's dress code had been repealed, etc. Um, for an audience like TRT Worlds. Obviously, all these things are very important. We ran the lead of, uh, of uh, Sudan uh, takes on a raft of sweeping, uh, liberalizing reforms in a bit to consolidate its democratic transition. Terrible lead. Um, it doesn't really, it kind of, okay, fine. In a story like that, obviously, you want to pick out and understand, okay, who is my reader? Is my reader like, okay, these are probably mostly, a lot of them are in the Muslim world. Um, so what is the thing that's going to interest them? The thing that's going to interest them the most is probably FGM, maybe the alcohol drinking, and uh, maybe the death for apostasy. So maybe when you have a story, think what is really in your story the one thing that is going to make people think, oh, interest, like really, well, I want to know more about that, that one thing. So you have to, I cannot give a formula for this, but all I can say is that in your story, you should know when you are reporting the story, um, what the lead is, because that is the thing you should be able to pick out basically what is the one thing that is going to resonate with the most people. That's the question you should try and answer in your head. If you go to a press conference even, and let's say it's a press conference on um, floods, uh, like something very seems very boring, um, and somebody just mentions, for instance, that, um, you know, this is the this is the fifth time that for instance um the city's uh sewers have over overflown with just one centimeter of water even though let's say 15 people 20 people have died which lead do you want to take right so it's up to you this is a judgment call 15 people are always more uh let's say valuable in terms of human loss of life but what is important is that the government has not changed anything in the last 15 floods Right, um, you can't always save people's lives, but you can easily fix gutters. Um, so you can try and find that one thing that will resonate with people. Try and find that thing and put that in your lead and hint to it in your headline. So that's the best I can do. I can, there's no formula per se, but find that one thing that you feel or that will resonate. Ask a friend, ask a non-journalist, ask your husband or wife or your or your friend be like, you know, what do you find interesting in this story? And a lot of the time, they'll find the thing that you won't and because they are actually the reader. You, we journalists tend to write for journalists a lot of the time, which is wrong. We should write for our readers. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Mirza, by the way, would you rather to, would you, would you rather prefer to, for me to take bulk of questions than you answer or one by one? As Whichever, it's up to you. I mean, I have some time to answer questions, um, so it's up to you. 
we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes left for our session to, to be done. So it's better to we get the bulk of questions so we can give more, uh, you know, uh, chance to our audience at the moment. So uh, Miss Sakaria Noor from Somali. Uh, Miss Sakaria, do you hear us at the moment? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, yes. Uh, I hear you. My question is, we see uh, the important articles in the in the in the journals and the websites uh, are too long somehow. Uh, is there any secret uh, that uh, makes them uh, long, or we can make and write? Uh, short or normal uh, articles that talk is important topics like security, politics, and the gender values. Okay. Um, Thank you yeah. very much. Um, okay, yeah. So, uh, look, I'll give you a, a, a brief guideline of what I think are kind of sweet spots for news stories. I, you know, you can write something within 300 words and it tells the whole story. You don't need to say more. Six, I would say for news stories, let's say, 600 words are usually good. Six to 650 is a very sweet spot. Somebody, when they open the, the page or they open the website, the article, they, they look at it, they see, okay, this is manageable. Um, and it's harder to write shorter. It's easier to write more words. It's a lot harder to get everything across in a very few words. So 650, usually I would say for a news article is good. You can go up to 850, you have interviews and things like that. For opinion articles, let's say 850 is a good mark. Um, anything shorter than that usually sometimes feels like less, but 600 words, 650 words also works for opinions. It depends on the format of the newspaper, for instance. But I would say keep, um, you know, don't think that you have to write long to write well. Um, I try and get our journalists to write as short as possible. I want short stories. I want good stories that are short. They are easy to consume. Um, people can, and, and, and in, the, in a digital age, people don't sit on their phones and want to read a 3000 word article, you know, people just don't want to do that, even though there is a time and a place for those things. There is a very valuable uh, pieces that are 3000 and when somebody sits down, they go in knowing that they're reading that. But for your average articles, I'd say, keep these as your guidelines, go from between 600, even 500 um, to 850 words is usually a kind of a sweet spot. So thank you, um, Miss Farhana Shaznas from Bangladesh. Miss Farhana, do you hear us? Hello. Yeah, I do. Thank you so much. Uh, so my question is: I'm currently working as a sub editor, and daily I get a lot of articles to edit. And I kind of figured it's, it's easy to spot the really good and bad ones. But uh, like you kind of have a range in between where you have some articles which are probably not the best but uh, they're doable. Like you can make them more palatable by editing them maybe. So I just wanted to know if you have any pointers on how to spot such articles, like which can be made like uh, better, like to speed up the process. Thank you. Um, that's a very good question. Uh, it's a very hard question to answer because I, I struggle with this as well because I a lot of the time get articles that are like, okay, I can make this into something. Do I want to spend the time? The first thing you should do, and, and this is going to be a very boring suggestion, but the most important thing in any newsroom is uh, time management, right? So I would say if you are an editor and you're going to look at maybe eight pieces a day, um, I'm not sure what your workload is, but do it by time management. Um, then after that, make the judgment first. You see, okay, how much time do I have? Second, look at is what is the value of this article in terms of, okay, I would say the articles that are only middling, that are just passable, only choose them if they're a very unique piece in the first place. If it's, if it's somebody once again writing on, um, you know, US-China talks or something, like there's a thousand articles out there on that. Why spend the time to fix that article to make it just one of a million? If you have something very interesting, very unique of, let's say, uh, somebody pitched me a piece today on a guy who was uh, sentenced to death in, the, in a one coup in Turkey, and then he was killed in this other coup in Turkey. That story, if it comes to me passable, I'm going to work to make it good because that is a unique story that nobody has. So I would say first look at 
like organizing your time, look at the value of the story itself. Um, is that story valuable in terms of to your readers? Is this something that, you know, people will be like, okay, this is something different than what else is out there. And the other thing is, I think the best way uh, to writing wise is, is the person's headline deck and lead clear? Is the idea clear in there? If it's clear in there, then you can recognize that, okay, maybe I, I can spend time on working with the rest of the story because I know that this is, I have to make the rest of the piece speak to this that is up here. If the top is muddled, um, I would say maybe just give up then because it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be very tough to kind of figure out, okay, what is a writer really trying to say with this piece? Um, so in an opinion as well, you know, you have your opinion, there should be a strong contention or argument at the top and everything should kind of work towards that. So those are kind of the basic guidelines, I would say. Um, you know, in newsrooms, a lot of the time, a lot of it is about time management and meeting deadlines. So those are, those are important things that you should consider. And then the novelty um, of the story and, you know, are people gonna click on it? You know, like that's, uh, unfortunately, that's something you have to take into consideration. So, yeah. Thank you so much. So thank you, uh, Ms. Farhana. Um, Mr. Zahar Dovram from Afghanistan. Mr. Zahar. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I want to ask the core difference between editorial analysis and commentary. And my second question is, uh, can we share our reports or outputs with Charity World? Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I'm going to put my email here. I'll just type it out now so everyone can see. Um, when you have something to pitch, feel uh, uh, feel free to um, you know pitch it uh, to send it to us. Um, I've sent my email there. Okay. Uh, did you ask what the difference between uh, editorial uh, analysis and commentary is? Yes. I mean, look at the editorial. I mean, it depends. Uh, what we call an editorial in the business is something that comes from the editorial board of the newspaper itself. Um, what you have as analysis or opinion, these are usually generally from external contributors. Um, this is the basic difference. Um, so I'm not sure if that answers the question that you're asking. Uh, thank you. It's answered actually just. I wanted to know the content of the editorial and the commentary. Sometimes I became confused about the content when I look the content and the approach of editorial writing with commentary. Uh, it's to me, it's like the same. Just uh, the writer can be different from the organization or outside the organization, but uh, the approach and the content of the analysis or editorials seems the same. Okay, I'll uh, give I'll give you a basic. Um, um, so of course, the, the basic, the main difference is obviously the editorials are written in house, um, generally by people who are associated with the thing, and the opinions and the analysis come from outside. But the basic things, as I had mentioned, um, a, an editorial that's coming from within uh, should be speaking to. Uh, the issue and is not really is is there to kind of give what they think their readers kind of view the situation as uh, the opinions and the analysis generally from outside contributors tend to be their own they don't have to take a whole organization into consideration these are very very subtle differences there are obviously overlaps there at the end of the day they're giving a position they're stating a position on an issue so basically at that level there's not much of a difference but when you look at the subtle nuances in the writing, you will see that editorials always seem like they're speaking on behalf of more people than themselves. Um, so that is, let's say, one major difference. A newspaper always feels like they're representing the voice of the people, of, of certain people. So you, they try and approach it from that, from that, uh, from that perspective, let's say. Uh, so we have one question from chat. Uh, it's been asked too many times. Uh, they're asking, can you please the, explain the difference between news article, feature, and opinion, and are they interlinked? Yeah, okay. Um, so a news, uh, so the, the biggest difference is opinion is completely separated. Um, opinion is something that you don't need reporting in. 
um, you basically say this is this is happening right now. For instance, Sudan has made these liberal reforms, and I strongly disagree. This is why, and this is why it's going to be bad for society. The news article on that says this is what Sudan has done. These are the different laws that they are changing. This is what the laws were. Um, this is what certain people are saying about them. Like a certain group are saying that we agree with them. A certain group is saying we disagree with them. And that's your basic news story. Who, what, where, when, why, how. Um, the feature, a feature is essentially taking the, making a story out of it, a narrative out of it. So you go a little more in depth, you find the characters involved, maybe find somebody who has, uh, you know, who has been, a, uh, a, who has violated one of these laws. And then you, they, you have them tell you their story, you know, I was uh, 15 years old and I was walking on the street and I was lashed, publicly flogged um, because I didn't do this, which the law says. Oh, and then you say, okay, well, these are the laws that have changed. And then you go and you speak to maybe a cleric and you say the cleric, oh, okay, what does the cleric have to say about it? The cleric says, you know, this is the reasons that we need these laws in place because Sudan is a conservative society, is a Muslim society. And we feel that these laws help to um, preserve the Muslim character of the country. Okay, then you go speak to a minister or you speak to somebody in the transitional government and they tell you, look, we need to change the way Sudanese society has been. This is more of a feature which goes into um, the real in-depth into who are the people behind these stories, what kind of drives them, uh, how have they been affected. The new story basically tells you the who, what, where, when, why, how, who's, who has done what in the country, what has happened. If I just need to look at it in five minutes, I should know that this is what, what has happened um, in Sudan. If I want to read about how and why it has happened and who thinks what, then I'll read the, then I'll read the, the, the feature on it. And if I want to either confirm my own biases or read why somebody thinks this is a completely idiotic thing to do, then I'm gonna go read the opinion piece on it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mirza. And last question of today's session, I wish we can give uh, more chance to our speaker. I see there are a lot of people that are keen to ask questions, but I believe if you direct your questions via email to Mr. Mirza when he has a time and availability, maybe he can answer from uh, via email. So last person of today's uh, session, Ms. Ahlam Gaju from Morocco. Ms. Ahlam, uh, please, you may proceed. Yes, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for your presentation. That was interesting. Uh, my question is, uh, what are the main uh, skills that a journalist needs to develop in him, on himself? Thank you. Number one is curiosity. Um, you have to be curious about the world and everything around you. Uh, you should be uh, learn to be skeptical. Um, don't believe everything you read. Um, be able to hold two competing ideas in your head. Um, just because you believe, um, for I'm just going to use the Sudan example again because I've used it a few times. Just because you believe that um, these laws are a good thing for Sudan, um, don't try and think that, okay, now how do I make a story, you know, trying to criticize the laws. Be, try and explore every subject like it's the first time you're reading about the subject. Don't feel like you know everything. So this is, again, a, this is all a, a function of curiosity. The more curious you are about the world, um, the more curious uh, you want to, uh, the more curiosity you have about why do things happen to people? Why is there injustice? How can this injustice be addressed in the world? Of course, you have to have empathy. You have to have compassion um, for people who, who are suffering, uh, essentially. Uh, journalism has, I mean, as they say, good news is no news. Um, we tend to focus on, on the bad things. That doesn't mean you can't write stories about good things. You can, but you should have empathy, compassion, curiosity. Um, these aren't skills. These are like things that you should try and um, have qualities you should have skills. Um, this is something people don't attach with journalism, but you should be disciplined. Um, you should have a writing schedule. Um, know that, uh, you know, let me practice writing for 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes. It's a small amount of time. Do that. Uh, read, read a lot. Uh, you should read more than you write. Um, so read a lot, write a lot. Um, these are the main skills you kind of have to hone as a journalist and 
you know, an, uh, one of the hardest skills and one of the most valuable skills in journalism is networking. And I don't mean that in terms of getting jobs. I mean that in terms of developing sources. Um, creating news is, is, is what wire agencies and things do. And you do that by going, for instance, when I was reporting in Pakistan, I would just go every day. And I'd go to a few police stations and I'd go and sit with them and have tea and get to know them and say, what's going on today, this, that. And slowly, 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 as you become closer to these people and you get to know them, they start to feed you stories. They start to tell you, this is what's happening here. Oh, did you hear? Um, this is this is what uh, kind of has taken place in this jurisdiction. Have you heard? Oh, we've just got this crazy story of this woman who killed her husband and has cooked his remains. You know, and they'll be the first one to give you those stories. This is, And this applies for everything, whether you're talking about um, you know, municipality connections, whether you're talking about politicians or ministers, whoever, develop your sources through networking. Understand also how countries and cities work from the top down. What does a government work as? How is a government organized? What are the branches of government? How do those branches interact with each other? What is a parliament? How do things get passed in a parliament? How does something become law? How does things work on a, on a district level, on a provincial level? When you understand how a country works in terms of it's uh, the way a country is structured and organized and the laws are built, only then will you really be able to take out uh, um, why things are wrong and you'll know instantly. Um, why is this person dealing with this issue? This is an issue that should be dealt with this municipality. And this is oh, okay, I see now this is actually a power struggle between the municipality and, and, and the provincial government, for instance. So when you know these things, um, you will see how everything is connected. And when you can draw, connect the dots between things, you know, the job of a journalist to, is to connect the dots. You know, why is the gutter on my street doesn't work? It could be because somewhere someone up in the government has said they're not going to give money to that government because they have some sort of issue with them. So if you slowly, slowly, slowly connect the dots, sometimes you can reach all the way to the top. But the only way to do that is to know how your country, how your city at least, how your neighborhood even is organized. So these are some skills that you can hone, some things that, you know, that um, are, the information is there for everybody. Um, but again, you know, be curious, um, be understanding of, understand power structures, you know, who are the aggrieved in any situation? Um, who are the ones who are at the end of injustice? Don't, one thing I would say, don't like indulge in both sidesism. Uh, don't, don't just put objectivity in the piece for the sake of objectivity. If there is clearly, clearly somebody who is being wrong in a certain issue, then give that side more weight. Don't give as much weight to the aggressor or to the oppressor. Um, yes, maybe give their reasoning or whatever is in there, but understand that there is an aggrieved party here and there's power structures that exist in this world. And a lot of people are victims of these power structures and you should, you should tell your stories that represent these things accurately. It should, I would say accuracy and being fair is more important than being objective. Um, being fair, I think is a better way to put it. Objectivity, it has its place, but it should mean that you approach every story with objectivity. That doesn't mean you present the story with every side has an equal weight because every side doesn't have equal weight at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I hope that um, answers the question. Thank you, Mr. Mirza for this uh, beautiful presentation and the session. Unfortunately, we will not be able to entertain more questions uh, since to do uh, to time uh, constraints. Uh, but uh, thank you to Mr. Mirza uh, for his time and contribution to our uh, online media training. And thank you our participants for their keen and uh, interest to our uh, speaker as well. Uh, so that's all for today. Uh, thank you for thank you all for participating and being here. So um, that's all from my side, and thank you so much to all of you. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Uh, please feel free to message me. If you guys want to email me, please feel free. Okay. You hear the Mr. Mirza, so please feel free. To, you can find his email from the chat box yeah. if you are uh, asking. You. So you, thank you.